right. I think we're live, man. Right? Love it. Don't look at my face. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Don't look at my face. I'm actually having a hard time looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the good people of the world will tell us, beard oh, or no beard. Will be. <laughs> so let, let's give a pe let's give people a couple of more minutes. Yeah, we're almost at two hundred. People are coming in. Nice. We're expecting a good four hundred people today, guys. Yeah. I, I think everybody can hear me, but that's good. That's okay. I think we're expecting about four hundred. Good morning from Toronto. This is Paula Akri. George Clark from Penticton, British Columbia. Yes, BC is in the house. Hello, Windsor. I love, see, I love seeing our friends from BC. That tells me that we're on to something. They support us so much. It's seven thirty in the morning there. Like big shout out. Like you know, you get on and you sign on to the webinar. You sign on to brunch with REC. Even our friends from Alberta. Big big shout out. Yes, can't leave out Bolton. Not Catherine Rowley in the house. What's up, Catherine? Spiros of Essasakis. Uh, Bobby was telling me uh, about his good friend Spiros, and he's now plugged in, and uh, they're looking for opportunities. That's great. Beverly Jones, good morning. What we got? William oh, Clark, you. Alberta. Everybody's New Brunswick. Art Raposo, yes, sir. Mr. Raposo. Why don't... Uh, what do we you know, I still have the picture of the sold sign that we sold down by, uh, yeah, what was on, it? Uh, uh, by, by, South by, by, yeah, right, right, South Otobico there on uh, Lakeshore, man. I have, the picture, of you, I have the picture of you on the ladder. I know. It's the only, time, that I've gotten on, it's the only time I've gotten on a ladder. Why don't, uh, <laughs> why, see, was, why don't we get rid of our Bobby, uh, the, the, the welcome screen now? I want, I want people to see this handsome face. Here we go. Of Simo says. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> I can't get used to my face. <laughs> Guys, give a oh. thumbs up or a thumbs down on Simos's new look. There's no facial hair, fully, fully bald now. I think he took it to heart when we were saying, you look like you're 40. <laughs> Last week <laughs> for his birthday. Give oh, him a man. thumbs up or a thumbs down. I know, who is that kid? I know, oh, guys. Crazy. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> What made you do it today in the morning, Steve? Well, so you're just tired of the beard or what? No, man. Like I, I, I legit haven't seen my face in like I think 10 or 12 years. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I figured just go. So I was doing my head because yeah. I, I, so I wanted to have a nice fresh head. And I said, the hell with it. Let's go. Baby wow. face is right. Thanks, Don Bowman. My man. Welcome to, welcome to everyone who's uh, uh, on the webinar here, live on the webinar, live on YouTube. Hi to all of our friends on YouTube, as well as uh, live on Instagram today. We're trying something a little different. I uh, just want to say, to say hi to all of our friends live on Instagram. Leave us a comment. Let us know that you're there. Um, shout out to Luke, who's controlling uh, the panel on live on Instagram. Uh, and uh, we got a treat for you guys today. A huge huge tree this gentleman that's going to be joining us for brunch with rec both simos and i are so grateful to 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 know him to for him to give us the advice he gives us from a real estate perspective but also from a business perspective his company he's the founder and president of one of canada's fastest growing companies the company is called keyspire he's trained and get this ladies and gentlemen he's trained over a hundred thousand investors his community is 40,000 and still growing he's been at this game of real estate for a very very long time I please help us welcome mr. Michael Saracini how you doing today Michael nice to see you here buddy good hey, morning good. my brother good morning and welcome up oh my Simos <laughs> what are you I was when I was uh, watching your guys opening monologue, I'm like, who is joining Jazz? <laughs> Did they hire a, a hot young new intern or something? Is it it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. Oh my Michael, I'm not, I'm not surprised you got a big whiteboard behind you, my man. You, 
you are definitely a mad scientist with tons and tons of ideas. You got so much going on, so much going on. Michael, we have people from all across the country that are live with us, okay? I think we're gonna be expecting, or we're probably up to close to 400 people live. We have friends on YouTube that are watching live. We have friends that are watching live on Instagram, okay? And then thousands and thousands of people are gonna watch this recording. Can you give us a little bit about your backstory? I want you to share that with all of our friends. And, and as the messages are coming in, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, Michael. Hi, Michael, how you doing? It's all, all over the place. Um, and, and just before you start, actually, Michael, to everybody who's watching right now, for all your questions, we are gonna get into a Q&A later with Michael. Um, please put all your questions in the Q&A section and Tyler and Bobby will make sure that they watch for that and we will get to all the questions. And if we do leave one or two out, both myself and Simos will shoot an email to Michael and say, Michael, we lost, we, 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 uh, one of the questions got lost in the kerfuffle. Can you answer this for us? So Michael, my man, thank you again. And please share your backstory a little bit because I just love it. I love everything about what you've been able to do. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to start by saying thanks guys for, for having me on and, uh, you know, we, we chat as much as we can. We do things live in public like this, and then we chat over email on the phone. So really great to have you guys part of my network and part of not only my KeySpark community, but have our joined community. So amazing. I've got to say that. Uh, and, you know, that's what it's all about. Everybody watching is when you want to have a collaboration and in business, you got to have surround yourself with good partners, good people around you that uh, you just have some fun with like this. And so, you know, learn from our example, if whether you're in real estate or you sell shoes or, you know, you're in HR, whatever you do, um, just surround yourself with the people that you have fun with and that can, that you can grow together. So uh, my backstory, well, first I want to show you what I'm having for brunch. Cause I'm having, yes, I apologize. Yes. What? what are you having for brunch? Yeah. I'm having, uh, I'm having some grapes and blueberries, two of my favorite. Uh, what? and trying to have a nice little lunch breakfast, uh, a light breakfast. I'm, uh, I'm like you, Jazz. I remember I watched you a couple of weeks ago. I've been joining RE, uh, Brunch with REC as many times as I can. Thank uh, you. And uh, I fast too, as well in the morning. So I like to give my insulin the, uh, the ability to get down a little bit low. I like to get my body a little bit of a, of a break from those things. And um, so I usually fast in the morning, but I decided to have a little bit of uh, fruit here with us. Uh, nice, nice. Okay. And do you do coffee? Do you do coffee in the morning or tea, Michael? Or I do coffee. I, I'll I'll have two coffees and then I'll eat around uh, twelve, twelve thirty. Well, now that now that was my re schedule before. Now my schedule is eat at twelve sharp every day with the family. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, a couple of coffees for sure. Yeah, it's it, it, it's nice to spend this much time with the family. It's definitely very different. I've literally never spent this much time with my family ever, uh, and it's uh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I've really like the, the bond and being able to teach your children, like all that's frustrating to be, to have to be a teacher and run a company, like our, our, our company size has become significant and it's very demanding. So to have to teach the kids three, four hours a day uh, between the both of them uh, and my wife's a social worker. So she's, she has a demanding role. It's getting frustrating, but like it's become absolutely ridiculously mm -hmm. rewarding because like, you're pounding a one-on-one -on -one lesson on them every day. So it's, it's just, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's changed my outlook on so many things. I've had so many eye-openers lately. Uh, so let this, uh, let, let this uh, bad news on the global stage, it has a lot of positives, and, and I'm definitely reaping the benefits, and it's starting to feel really good. Yeah, well, look, yeah, look, I mean, there's opportunity in every situation in life. And uh, we're going to get into that a little bit today. Uh, yeah. But look, there's, there's a lot of, lot of shitty things happening out there and, um, you know, bad things and really bad things. But uh, as, a, as a civilization, we will thrive and in, uh, it will survive and individuals will thrive. Those people that do certain things will thrive. And there's the three main buckets that I live my life by, health, wealth, and relationships. And so... Uh, and I've talked to, I see a lot of people from the Coffee with Michael series, and you guys know I talk about not only the wealth, but the health has to be there, uh, or else it doesn't matter how much money you have. And then your relationships have to be there. You can't be a 50 billionaire with no relationships and no meaning on those other parts of your life. So all three of those parts have massive opportunity right now. Uh, Simeon, you just talked about the relationship opportunity. Absolutely. Huge relationship opportunity for um, for, for spending time with our family and our kids, if, if that's who you are. Um, and you know, there's two types of 
two groups of people out there right now. There's the groups that are in constant chaos. Everybody's at home and you got a couple of kids. Maybe you've moved in the, the in-laws to help out. Um, and so there's families that are completely households that are in chaos and it's too chaotic. But there's also households that are the opposite. Households that are, are uh, people that are alone and living alone. And it's the opposite of the chaos that the three of us are going through. I don't know about you guys, but it's chaos in my house, right? Uh, <laughs> there's people that are, it's the opposite of chaos. It's, no, it's ours chaos. is in perfect harmony, Michael. Perfect harmony. Oh, yeah, exactly, right? It's perfect. <laughs> uh, so I want to make perfect. sure that uh, everybody understands. Uh, look, for the, look for the strengths in your situation. Whether you're at home and you're in chaos, well, there's a great opportunity to build your relationship equity with the people you're, you're locked in with. Um, sometimes we, we want that, sometimes we don't, I guess. But uh, on the other side, if you're, if you're alone and you feel like I got too much time on my hands, there's a great opportunity to build relationship equity with yourself, with your education, with your learning. And I'm taking a, a, I'm taking a ton of courses over the last eight weeks. I can talk about them a little bit later. But I want to just say there's so much opportunity right now. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the financial opportunity. But I'll, I'll answer your question, Jazz. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief because I'm, I'm seeing all the names. I recognize a lot of the names and seeing you guys before. Welcome to all the Keyspire members right across the country that, that, that are with us. And obviously you recognize those names and, you, and to all the members, you recognize the face that is Michael Saracini. You will not recognize Seamus's face, but you have seen him in the past before. Um, but, but, but yes, welcome to all the members. But there's yeah. still a lot of people that, that, yeah. that don't know you, Michael. I want to make sure that they, they understand who's in our presence today. And I yeah. truly mean that. And why? Like, and why? Yeah, yeah. And why we like decided There's so to much value in my Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you my story here, my path. And it's really important when you hear other people's stories that you get inspired by them, that you try and model the things that went well, but you always understand you can't follow somebody exactly. And I have people oft, ask often, like, how do I do exactly what you did and what you and Scott did and what you and your other business partners did? How do I follow you exactly? I say, you can't copy exactly what I did because I am a very unique, we're all very unique people. I had a different, um, you know, passion set, ambition set, skill set, resources, money, time, nobody, you're never going to get that same combination again. So everyone will take a slightly different path. Uh, but what you can do is learn from some of the things that I've done and jazz and Simeon and other people and take what works and apply it to yourself. So I started, uh, I, I turned, uh, turned 40 a couple weeks ago. A lot of you joined me on my birthday there. I did a birthday with my son, um, and I started 20 years ago. And so it started in, in real estate, um, since then got into different businesses, but it was around a necessity, which it, it often is. And people have life changing moments for two reasons and really only two reasons. There's a realization or there's an incident. The realization is internal. The incident is external. So the example of the incident is you lose your job. You get a bonus, you get an inheritance, your kids move out, you have kids, you get married, you get unmarried. Those are all, those are all incidents that drive a, a life-changing moment. For, yeah, for me, it wasn't an external incident. It was a, the, op, the other side of that is an internal realization. Some of us wake up in the morning, maybe you're 20, maybe you're 30, maybe you're 70, uh, and you say, holy shit, I've got to make a change because it's not going the way I want it to go. Sorry about that, Michael, go on. No one here to feed me grapes anymore now that we're <laughs> It was a good break for you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I think that's important because you've got to understand, everyone watching, if you're having or going to have a life-changing changing moment, it'll be one of these two sources that drive it, an external incident or an internal realization. And any story you read, anyone you talk to that, made, that did great things, there was this moment, this incident or realization where everything, the trajectory changed for them. So... Me, I was 20 years old, had a realization that, um, that, and I probably made a lot of guesses at that point, but I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to be as rich as I want, as wealthy as I want. That's what it's all about. The cars, the women, the boats. I'm like, oh my God, I want all that, but I'm not going to get it doing what I'm doing now. And I was going to school to be a doctor. I was in biomedical science. So um, I, I love the idea of helping people and getting paid well to do it. Uh, and then I bought my first uh, income property almost by accident, saw that their, their landlord was making more money than we were paying him and bought the first income property with my, my still business partner today. And uh, I did the math. I said, holy shit, I'm going to make more money. I had a realization that I'm going to make more money, build more wealth with real estate over 10 years than I will being a doctor for the next 10 years. And so I switched my major to um, 
uh, biomedical science to bio side, just biological science. So I could take a business minor. I, I freed up some core courses. And then I uh, decided to dedicate the next 10 years plus to real estate. And so I just started, kept buying, kept buying properties, other people's money. I had no money. We were in student debt. I was in debt. And so used other people's money. Some of that was my student loan. Some of that was JVing with parents or family and friends, which is the, the circle of influence, I call it. That's where you start when you're looking for money. Um, and then started acquiring properties and use this flip to yourself strategy. So uh, every time I renovated a property and I increased the value, I could then refinance it, take that money back out and then buy another property and then do the same thing over and over again. So that allowed me to acquire a, a large amount of properties in a short period of time. Uh, so that was, that was pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. Uh, it was interesting coming home and telling my parents that I no longer want to be a doctor. I want to be a real estate investor. Like imagine that, right? Italian family. How did that go? Michael, <laughs> Michael. No, oh my the only one, not the only one, but the, the person that was supportive, most supportive right off the bat, because you're closest yeah. to your parents is a shock. My nonna was so supportive. She said, yes, wow, you do it. You buy as much property as you it. can. You know, Italian immigrant came here with yes. nothing. My grandfather came three or four years before to try and make enough money to rent a place and then buy a place. And um, that was in Toronto. So you can all imagine how that went from buying a yeah. $7,000 house to, to 1.8 million today, same house, yeah. right? But yeah, yeah. Um, this was 20 years ago. She said, you buy it. And then everyone kind of got on board when they saw the results. And there's a good yeah. lesson there because a lot of people say, how do I get my family, my friends, even my spouse on board and uh, what i've learned is prove the prove it out show the results try and get some results any way you can even if it's a small win and people will start to pay attention people will start to come on your team on your side um when you show them some small results well i think that's very important that you mention that right because even even some things that we do in business both myself and cmos the industry looks at us and like what the heck are you guys doing like what's this podcast thing what's all these videos like why aren't you doing the, 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 the normal thing of knocking on doors and calling people and asking if they want to buy, sell, or invest. And we started to do something a little bit that was non-traditional. And then at first, everyone thought we were crazy, said it's never going to work. We kept nice and quiet in our little studio, didn't bother anyone. And then over time, six months, eight months, now two years, people are like, hey, how do we do this? How do we get on board? You know, and so now the opportunities are coming from all over the place to yourself. You say it a lot, as well as your partner, Scott, says it, that, that, that um, opportunities everywhere. You just got to get in the way of it. Right. And yeah. we, were, we were speaking about that a little bit earlier as well. Opportunity is flowing every single day. It's moving. There's opportunity movement. Your job isn't to create opportunity as a business person. And I'm talking to everyone. If you're in real estate or any business, it's all the same principles. Your job is not to create opportunity. It's just to put yourself in front of it just to get in the way of opportunity. The way you do that is being present. The way you do that is getting out there, is, do, is, is, um, is getting yourself involved in certain things. Getting involved with the community, getting involved with groups is the way that you get yourself in front of this opportunity. Now, I, I mentioned the 100,000 investors you trained. I, have to, I don't think I've ever asked you this, Michael. How does that make you feel when you hear it? Like that's a huge, you know, a hundred thousand investors you've trained and more, I'm sure that like, I know for sure that's growing as well, but how does it make you feel when you hear that? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's bigger than I ever thought it would be. And I've got to, I've got to give credit to my team because I have a team of oh, over 50 people that help me do this. And whether it's our coaching team uh, that coaches people virtually, or if our, it's our trainer team that travels across North America, teaching people in live events, well, not right now, but in live events over the last 10 years, um, I couldn't have done it without them. So, you know, if my team's watching, thank you guys. It's because of you, I can do that. I then become the hub. I become the strategist. I become the, you know, person that's directing things and um, really trying to take the things I'm learning from other business people, the things I'm learning in the courses I'm taking and apply those to Keyspire so that we can provide the best education, the best experience for our customer, whether somebody pays us or not. We've had people that they haven't paid us anything in 10 years and we still add a ton of value. We've had people that have paid us 30, 40, $50,000 for years uh, in order to get high level executive one-on-one -on -one, uh, care. And we take care of all of them. We want to make sure everybody is taken Sorry. care of. And I think uh, I'm going to just put a pin in your most important point there, Jazz, of what you guys have done at REC is my number one rule is add value first. 
no matter what business you're in, right? So instead of like you guys focusing your effort on buying ad space and buying, you know, bus benches and stuff like that, still probably important to do. I don't know if you do that, but it's still good to do. But you're like, let's put effort into giving people value for free, adding value for free with our podcasts, with our conversations, with our one-on-ones. And uh, when people see that we can add value, then we'll gain a customer. They'll do business with us. And if they don't, that's great too. We've made an impact on the world. So, so I, I do want to say something to that because from a marketing perspective, and everybody here is a real estate investor and everybody here is a business owner. So as a real estate investor, you're a business owner. You're building something. And you can't forget that. And Michael said bus benches, uh, garbage cans, billboards, we're mentioning the traditional marketing things. There is nothing wrong with that. We don't do it, and I'll tell you why we don't do it. Um, and I actually uh, welcome everybody to, to argue me on that because we have an entire real estate industry that's still stuck on spending tens of thousands of dollars a year on, on what I believe is bullshit. So we never, before the podcast, before the radio show, before anything, we didn't do that then either. Why? Because you're creating awareness and impressions. I get why you do it. You want to become a household. You want to be, you want to become, create this, the, 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 the simplicity of, yeah. So Mr. Smith is that, is that area expert, but you never provide, provided value. So all your, even when you do get the business and no matter what business that is, it could be car sales, it could be a dealership. It doesn't matter. I'm not talking about real estate specifically. All you're doing is creating a transaction. You're not creating a relationship. A transaction and a relationship couldn't be bigger polar opposites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Transaction you eat today. Oh, here, here's a fish, eat it up. But if you never taught me how to fish, I'm going to starve tomorrow. So what was the point of eating today? It's a it's a complete it, it's a it's a, it's a bad system. It's always looking for the next transaction. It's always it, it doesn't it's not fulfilling. I think I it think that the big difference there as well, Simos, is the difference between marketing and sales, right? Like sales is very transactional based, and marketing is more branding, a little bit more high level, um, uh, gives you the opportunity to build those relationships. I have a question for you, actually, based on the, around this conversation, Michael. How would an investor, because we do have a lot of investors uh, listening right now, how would an investor, in your opinion, brand themselves? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And great question. today it has never been easier. When I was starting out, branding myself or my company was, was, was expensive. It was difficult. It was traditional advertising. There was no internet in the year 2000. That was like my first year university. So I would have got my first email address like, and, and like my first email ever that I don't even think you put pictures in. So you probably put that disc AOL disc in or something like that, right? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, yeah. The modem, the, the dial up modem, I had to go to university. 100%, 100%. <laughs> so it was, it, was a, it was a lot harder back then. It was harder to build a brand. It was harder to get noticed. Today, if somebody is starting today or looking to get to that next level, uh, it is as easy as, as it can ever, has ever been in history with social media. With, with YouTube, with Facebook, with Instagram, with all of these different things. And so um, before I answer the question, I would say if somebody, if that's your goal, if that's what you want is to create a brand and to create a following and create these relationships that are so important, then become an expert at that. Become an expert at Instagram, become an expert at Facebook. If you had no idea what to do, then take some courses, figure it out, like build that skill. Think of the skills you're going to build that are going to take you and your business to the next 10 years. Not the skills you have now, because a lot of the skills are, are, have been obsolete, especially with the pandemic. The skills are going out of, out of uh, touch, but these new little group of skills are being birthed. So um, with social media, you can brand yourself and get known and get followers. And uh, it's not about the number of followers or the number of, the number of people in your community. I'll call it that because relationship is the key word. Yeah. And to me, that, that word is community I use. It's not about the number of people in your community. It's about the quality of people in your community. You could have 35 people that follow you, your Facebook page or your group. But if those 35 people believe in you and what you do and they understand and they're aligned, that's more valuable than 50,000 that are just followed you because you have a, you know, a good magnet or something. Right? Well, well I, I love that because anybody who's watching who's on Facebook um, uh, uh, Tyler, maybe you can just uh, put it in here in the chat. It's a uh, uh, real estate millionaires by Keyspire. That group was one of the fastest growing groups I've ever seen. And you started it, you sent me an invite and, and then I looked in a week and I, I can't even remember how 
fast it grew. But what's happening inside the engagement that's happening inside that community is phenomenal. And so everyone here, if you're on Facebook and you're not part of that group, make sure you get at least part of, start there um, because there's just a lot of question, Q and A that happens, connections and networking and, and kudos and to educational you again, like, opportunities. Exactly. Like to get, to get invited to events, to get invited to, to meetups. Like there's a lot of action in that group. Yep. It's a very active group. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, yeah. So thank you you guys join that group. It's awesome. To, like 10, 12, 15,000. I don't even know how many tens of thousands we have now at this point. We start, I started, I think in October of last year. Um, <laughs> it's incredible how quick you do it. <laughs> so yeah. So, so, so it's happening quick. What happens is Facebook, um, this Facebook has their algorithm, their computer program. And when they see engagement, they recommend our group to other people. So that's what's happening is the group is, has so much engagement over 10,000 engagements a month with that group. And so Facebook says, hey, this group is important. It's got good value. And so now if you guys go on Facebook, anyone's on, you'll see on, your, on the side, it's like recommended group, recommended yeah. group. And so it's like a snowball. It, it takes a little bit to grow up first, but once it gets bigger and bigger and bigger with the Facebook algorithm, it grows so fast. And I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this group was 100,000 a year from now. I told my team, I want to be 100,000 on that group in five years, but we might hit 100,000 in, uh, in the first year. So uh, really interesting. Lots of value there. Yeah. Now, now, Michael, in terms of, and we'll kind of go jump back and forth, um, in terms of real estate, what has it provided for you, like investing in real estate, like for your personal life, what, what, what is it off, like what is it giving you? Yeah, it's given me different things throughout the year as I go through my, my personal life journey and my personal life cycle. And the things that fulfill me change just like they do with all of us. When I first started out, it gave me hope is what it gave me. So the first five years, I didn't have any money. It didn't give me any money. I invested every dollar back into the business. But it gave me hope. It gave me an amazing reason to wake up every single day other than just I got to write some exams or I got to go to class. It's like I have this bigger vision that I'm driving towards that is unknown, that like, I have no idea what it's going to look like or the journey is going to be, but I know that's where I want to be. And so that's amazing, um, when I started, it gave me hope. It gave me life. It gave me you know, vitality. And I've talked to some of our investors that are like 70, 75 years old. And I talk about long-term investing, right? It's like 30 years, 20 years. And so I come to me and they say, Michael, this is, I'm, I'm doing this. I joined your premium group uh, because I want to be a part of this. And I'm 75 or 78. Um, but this has given me life. I've been retired for 20 years. And now I have, I, I feel alive again. Like I have something, a purpose every single day. And it's not about the money. It's about my purpose and my kids and my grandkids or my church or my community, whoever I'm going to leave the money to. Um, and so that's what it gave me to start is it gave me purpose and life and vitality. It was really cool. I love it. I love it. Like, and, and I have to it, say, it was the driving sorry, force. Sorry. Go ahead. Sim. No, no, you go. Simo. Go, buddy. Um, hearing stories. Cause like we've been involved with your group and we've been at it now for 50 years. We've been with your group for, I believe, over six years at this point. So this yep. is crazy. Um, now seeing people develop from the beginning and seeing yeah. some of those success stories, so true. like it literally gives me goosebumps. Like literally gives me goosebumps. Because you see these people all the time. You see, like you run into them to the community because they're active investors. So like, you'll, like I'll see them where I'm going. I'm like, whoa. Like I met you, you were a school teacher. What are you doing here? <laughs> like it's, it's like, what are you doing here? I'm here for the same reason you're here. I'm like, all right, all right. So yeah. it's like, but you see the the success and the excitement and the fulfillment that people get from reaching these massive goals. And li literally there is nothing more rewarding. Nothing. And, and, more and, and, and some people, when we sit down with them, they, they look <laughs> at Michael um, and they see him on stage, they hear him. And they're like, okay, like, I really want to get the hundred doors. I want to get, you know, they want, they want exactly what Michael did. And, and you mentioned this earlier. I want to do it exactly the way that Scott Michael did it. And then you meet them a couple of years and they did one property and they're ecstatic. And we say, guys, don't worry about the hundred properties. One property will change your life. One income property will change your life. You're building up a retirement. Uh, uh, you're building up retirement income. You're protecting yourself. We all know we're not sure if this pension fund is going to be around and you're taking action yourself. So I think like, like it's nice to have the goals of a hundred doors, but even one will, will make a big difference in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the really important thing for people to think of when you think of your longer term life journey, 
real estate for a lot of you and a lot of us is just a gateway into doing other interesting and cool things. And so real estate to me was the gateway into learning about the business world, a gateway into learning about the value of networking, of people power, of proximity power, being close to people that are where you want to be. And out of real estate, I got into a lot of different things for two reasons. Number one, because I had the income and the security to do it. I didn't have to work every single day. So I had nothing for five years. I just had this hope, this fatality. To answer your question, after five years, it gave me money. And that was when my first mortgage came up for renewal. I had five-year terms. And so I didn't realize how much money I had until <laughs> year five. <laughs> Holy fuck. It's, it's like this it's coming up for renewal. You're like, yeah, and you have $180,000 in equity. $180,000? <laughs> you don't even just know off what one. Was Just off you one. Was just off one. <laughs> I right? love that. Well, you had 15, 20, 23 properties at that point. I'm like, I, don't, I mean, what do you mean? I told the mortgage broker, what do you mean? He's like, well, you could refinance and get a check. I'm like, for how much? For 180,000. I'm like, what? What? Yeah, I've never what, even heard what of that. What was, your, what was your tax on that refinance? My goodness, right? Yeah. And so I refinanced it and I paid no tax, right? So that's why I don't like, to, I don't like to sell. So. No, Go on, go on. Yeah. First part of my journey, it gave me hope. And I think that's important for everyone to understand because enjoy the journey, enjoy that every day because you're not going to make money right away. This isn't just a, you know, you start investing in real estate and six months later, you want to have two homes in Italy and Switzerland. It doesn't work like that. Um, the fuel has to be the vitality, the hope, the life, the purpose it gives you for the first little bit. And then you get to a point and it's different on everyone's journey. For me, it was around year five, starting from zero and putting in a lot of effort. It was about year five, and uh, then I had money. That's where the money came. And I started like having all this money I didn't know what to do with. And so then that to me was a, a staircase, a, a step in my ceiling of complexity where I, I broke through to the next side because I had a lot of capital. That's where I started getting into very um, capital style investings like private lending, private equity, JV partnerships, being a money partner because I had all this money and I, I, and I had to do something with it. I couldn't buy properties fast enough. And then the beauty is every year after year five, my property started coming up for renewal. So I created this laddering effect and every year money was flowing for another five, 10, 15, even today. I do it today, not with properties and mortgage terms, but I do it today with um, land development style investing and private lending style investing. So I ladder them and then every year I know what's going to pay out and then I have a plan to do something with that money. Um, so first is vitality, second is money, and then third stage of a real estate investor, becomes giving, becomes purpose, becomes helping other people. And so um, that's where I started with Keyspire. And I mean, Keyspire is not a charity. We, people pay us, our customers pay us, right? It's a business, but it's a business where I help people, where I'm, I'm, I'm earning income, I'm getting paid for my hard work and my skills by helping other people. I'm not selling something that's hurting other people. Um, I looked at some, you know, I thought about, and this is um, nothing against anyone who runs businesses that aren't like helping other people like we are. But I looked at a couple businesses when cannabis became legal, like these vape shops, and they were highly lucrative and, you know, investing in those. And I said, that's not my, not my brand. I don't want to invest in something where, where it doesn't help people. I don't, that doesn't help people the way I want to. So I'm more investing in things that help people. So that's stage three. It's how you can parlay all that to, um, to, to being, to the, to the generous and altruistic piece. You, you, you speak about helping people. And sometimes I'm not sure if it makes it all the way back up to you in terms of when somebody sees one of your events, comes to one of your events, um, um, sees you online, um, and then they'll come in touch with us or, or any other certified realtor <clears throat> right across the country. But Michael, you've made, like, you've made people millions of dollars. Like there's, there, there's, there's members right now on this live webinar that I know personally, I saw their names and they purchased something three years ago and now they're looking at their portfolio and it's, it's more than the 160,000 that you did on your first yeah, offer. Cool. <laughs> you know, so talking about helping people, like you've helped people make a lot of money and create wealth. And it's, and it's not just like the cash flow that they might see on a monthly basis. Um, both myself and CMOS and REC kind of took what you guys use in, in what you call the four ways to win. Um, so it's not just the cash flow. Can you touch on the other ways to win? Cause I do believe cash flow is important, but it's not the only way that you win in real estate. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, so thank you for sharing that. It's, it's great to hear. Um, I don't always hear about everyone's success and certainly don't hear about how much money people's people make because you know, things are confidential with our partners right. like you and you can't tell yeah. us how much money people are making, but it's great yeah. to hear um, from different sources that people are, are, are reaching their goals, making this money and, and 
you know, getting through those phases of phase one vitality, phase through wealth, making money, and then into phase three of, of really lifestyle freedom, doing whatever the hell you want, whenever, um, whenever you want. Um, so, uh, so thank you for, for saying that. Now the four, the, the four ways to win cash flow is super important. It's one of the things that I love investing in. Um, and when I started, it was, it was my main platform is to make sure there's a certain cash flow number, but if all you're going through is all, all you're looking for is cash flow, then just go get a job because it's going to be easier. It's going to be less headaches. It's going to be, um, it just that's cash flow is your job. The beauty of real estate is it gives you four ways to win. You don't just get that cash flow. You get your principal recapture. And these are on properties that we're renting. That is the mortgage pay down. So every single month, your mortgage gets paid down. And I learned this. It took me years to feel. All this stuff took me five years to figure out. And like, yeah. I could have, <laughs> at year five, if I would have taken more courses near the beginning, I could have got to year five twice as wealthy, or I could have got there twice as fast. And so, you know, getting educated. That's why I always talk about it. I, oriented my life around it. When you learn in those first few years, you accelerate your results exponentially because the first two years is where nothing, nothing really happens. And if you connect with people like you or me or anybody and educate yourself, that's where you shorten those first two years. And then that whole curve goes up. Uh, so that's the principal recapture I learned a few years in. Cause I was like, ah, my mortgage is like 1500 bucks. I'm pay- I'm, that's an expense. I'm paying 1500. And then like, it was like year three of doing my tax return. I actually paid attention to what the account was doing. And I'm like, my mortgage is 1500. That's 18,000 a year. Why did you only write off, you know, 10,000? I said, well, you're, that's, you're only 10,000 in expenses. The other 8,000 is yours. It goes in your pocket. It's your principal recapture. I'm like, what do you mean? And he explained, had to explain it to me, right? Because no one taught me this. It's 21, 22 years old. Principal recapture. So that's number two. The tenant pays down your mortgage. And so you get that piece. Then number three is passive appreciation. So real estate, and of any investment you can have, real estate is the most, the safest investment when it comes to the investment appreciating. Sure, it will go up and down and up and down. It always will. Um, but let's face it, people, humans have two needs, food and shelter, right? I'll put food and water is one, shelter is the other. That is our basic needs. We need we, our basic tangible needs, right? We need love and community and all those things. But as far as tangible needs, we need food and shelter. So get in the food business or the shelter business. Well, the shelter business is the barriers to entry a lot smaller than going to be a farmer and buying a thousand acres and, and $20 million of equipment. Um, and so get in the shelter business because it is the most secure business out there. And that's what we do as landlords, as investors. Um, even as pre-construction investors, we're in the shelter business. And if we follow a couple of simple principles like population migration and the simple, a couple of simple economics, My, um, Michael, then we're going to set ourselves Michael, up. For- I, I wanted to just expand a tiny bit uh, on the, the passive appreciation on housing. Uh, and what I want to expand on is because, again, like I know as a fact that we have a lot of savvy investors on this uh, call right now, but we also have a lot of new investors that haven't met us before and they're on YouTube or they're on Facebook and they're on Instagram. Passive appreciation on a leveraged asset. I just want to stick a a tiny segment in here. A home is worth $500,000. You buy that home using 20% down, which is $100,000. When that home goes up 3% or 4% or 5%, if you had taken that $100,000 and put into the stock market, and that went up at the same rate, 3% or 4% or 5%. On $100,000 in the stock market or in any monetary, other financial instrument for that matter that's non-leveraged, you would have earned at 5%, $5,000, just to keep the math simple. Your $100,000 that went into real estate, you still put the same money in 100000 the asset went up by 5%, the exact same as your stock. But in this case, you, you had a return on $500,000, meaning five times five, it's an easy calculation, it's $25,000 in the exact same year, in the exact same market. One goes up 5%, the other one goes up 5%. What you give up in liquidity from uh, the money markets to be into real estate, you can't press a button and sell your home. It doesn't work that way. But it's, yep. it's also not locked in for 10 years either. But it's not a liquid asset. You can't call it a liquid asset. What you give up in liquidity 
and the gain from leverage is just non-comparable. And this is the magic of real estate. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that singles because there is a lot of new people in, uh, uh, th that are uh, watching us right now that wouldn't understand that actually even at a basic level. So I'm glad that you brought that in for sure. It's very important to mention. Yeah, and, and, I, and I do want to turn it back to Michael. Like I do want you to finish your thoughts around the passive investment. Yeah. I just really wanted, because we're, we're a little bit numb because we live it every day. I just wanted to remind everyone back to basics. When we talk about passive appreciation, that's the magic that we're referring to. Mm -hmm. That's the long-term hold. There's nothing else to do. Like all the rest are, yeah. are cherries and, and whipped cream on top. It's all the deliciousness. Grapes and yeah, berries base, that Michael has. Grapes right and now. berries that Michael has. <laughs> but the true magic and the foundation of real estate is the stability and, and the, the leveraged mm -hmm. asset provides. Sorry, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah. And, and I want to expand on that because that's brilliant in, in terms of why do we invest in things? Why do we put our money somewhere? We want to have something that makes the most amount of money with the least amount of risk, right? We want this delta, low risk, high return. That is like the holy grail of investing. Real estate does that better than anything else. So how do we reduce our risk? Well, we know it's one of the most basic needs so that if people, what, what I was talking about earlier, we reduce risk because it's one of the most basic needs we have. If People have no money or there's an economic downturn like there is now. What's going to go first? The restaurants, the travel, the vac like we are in a living case study of why real estate is the best investment on the planet. What goes first? All the other crap goes for the shoes, the movie nights, the extra stuff. What do people have to do? They have to buy food and go to the grocery store, get it delivered. We're living that. They have to pay their rent. And if they can't pay their rent, what does the government do? Gives them money to buy food and pay their rent. The government's not giving money right now in Canada, in the US, in any country on the planet to go to the movies and to go. They're saying, don't fucking do that stuff. Don't, you can't go. Everything's, Everything's closed. Can't. Everything's closed. Yeah. Don't do that. What yeah. do we want you to do, human <laughs> civilization? Buy food and pay your rent. And so risk, this is the lowest amount of risk. And you know, for, for people watching that say, well, my tenants might not pay and uh, real estate's risky right now. Compare it to anything else on the planet that you can invest in. And real estate is still the least risky thing right now that you can invest in because it is a basic need. So that's the risk side. On the, on the growth or wealth side, remember, we want to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. How do we make the most amount of money? Well, real estate has something that almost nothing has that's, that Simeon just talked about, which is what I call the leverage multiple. It's the leverage multiple in real estate. The leverage multiple goes like this. If you can put a portion of the total value down, whatever that portion is will be the multiple you will get in your return. So for example, if you put one fifth down on a property, you get five times the return, which is 20% down. If you put one tenth down on a property, you get 10%, 10 times, 10 times, not 10%, 10 times the return. So I know you guys were doing deals that people were putting 20% down or even 5% down on pre-construction. And they went up like they, they went up 15, 20% in value. And on a 10 times multiple, people were making 200% on their money invested. Cause to me, the money invested is the deposit. It's the cash out of my That's pocket. Right. That's in economics. We call that opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost of putting a hundred of buying a $500,000 property is only $100,000. That's the opportunity cost of buying that property. So if I put that in the, the stock market, not to repeat uh, Simeon's example, in the stock market, that makes me 5% and I get $5,000. In the real estate market, it makes me 5% on 500,000. I get 25,000. So I get a five times multiple. So I want to make sure everyone wrote that down, understands leverage multiple. The fraction of the money you put in is the multiple you get back out. And real estate is virtually the only thing on the planet that can do this. Some stock portfolios allow you to do this in private investing. If you have over $10 million invested, you can leverage but, it. But now you're talking a whole us. different risk profile. The risk profile on future stock trading yeah. or, or anything, we can, it's not even in the same discussion. No, yeah. It cannot be in the same discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you mentioned there is about options, but risk profile, astronomically different. You mentioned taking notes. Guys, I, I've been blessed enough to be around this guy for six years. But no matter what, give me a sec here. I'm still taking notes on my window here with my marker as you wrote left. Just s s some words that you use and the way that you explain it. So thank you for that.
but there is a fourth way to win that I want you to go yes. back to as well, Michael. Okay, so that's passive investing and that's why that's significant. Um, that's, that's just a couple of the reasons why that's significant, very significant. And then there's the fourth way to win in real estate. And this way is the, what I call the control dial in your real estate, in, in your investing. No other investment, virtually no other investment on the planet gives you the type of control real estate gives you. What do I mean by that? In real estate, you could work harder and make more money or work less hard and make less money. You have full control. If for a couple months you want to just chill and do nothing, then you chill and do nothing. And your real estate's making you money with the three ways to win. If you want to really hammer hard, either in the first part of your career or maybe at year 10 or year 30, whenever it is you want to make more money, you execute this fourth way to win, which is active appreciation. And what that means to me is I can actively go into a property. I can actively choose to increase, improve the property, which will, which will increase the value because that's intrinsically how real estate works. Increase the value. Well, I should, I should put a caveat. If you do the right renovations in the right combinations, <laughs> yes, um, yes, yes. right. But for the most part, it's hard to screw up unless you're putting yeah. in like a, a pool and a spa and a student rental, you're not really increasing the value. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, this is kind of hard to screw up, but you, you, right. you you improve the property, you increase the value. So that does a couple things. It explodes your wealth and it increases your cash flow. It allows you to refinance and then explode your portfolio. I, I mean explode because you could take one and buy two and then take two and buy three sometimes with these down payments as they explode. But the most important thing I think for people watching is the fact that this gives you control over your life. And I can't go to my stock portfolio and I have money in the stock market. I balance my portfolio through it, all different investments, venture capital, real estate, stock. I'm at a point where I do that. Um, but at the beginning, the first 10 years, eight years was only real estate. I didn't touch anything else because I couldn't go get a stock market portfolio and wake up one morning and say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase the value of that portfolio. No, whatever happens in the market happens. And I have no control. Real estate and the fourth way to win active appreciation gives you control on how much money you make and how hard you work. And I think that is the holy grail of everyone's lifestyle freedom is love it. you get to choose how much money you make and how hard you work. What more do you want? Right? Yep. What more do you need? I agree. Now, now, Michael, you've been doing this for 20 years watching the market. What do you say to somebody that's fearful? Uh, or, or, yeah. or worried or concerned about the market doing this, going up and down. Or, or doing something what it's doing right now, the case study, what we talk about. This is a live case study. Yeah. We're, right now, we're living it. Michael, give us your leadership thoughts yeah. from okay. a real estate perspective on what's happening now. Okay. How do you deal with it? How do you sleep at night? Okay, I've got some, I've got some good thoughts. I've been thinking about this a lot over the last eight weeks, and I've talked to so many experts, including you guys over the last eight weeks and putting all the pieces together and doing my own research. So here's, here's what I've got. Here's the way I look at it. I can give you guys the way I look at it. Um, there's two things happening in everybody's life right now. There is what's happening out there and what's happening inside. So there's in, external and internal. The internal is the most important thing. So I'll start with external and then we'll get to internal. External is say the economy. What's happening with the economy? People are freaked out. Is there going to be a reset? There is a recession. How long is it going to last? What's that going to mean? Well, I still think right now is the greatest time to start or grow any business. And if you look throughout history, the, uh, the 1930 stock market crash, World War II, the tech bubble burst in 2002, the financial crisis in 2008, and now this one. If you look at those four and apply what we've learned to those five, what we've learned is that most people are worse off temporarily, but some people, a small group of people, become multimillionaires in all of these situations. Multimillionaires. And it's the people that don't pause their life internally when the external world pauses. The stock market crash, pause of the world. The World War II, pause. Everyone, it's a war. Everyone pause. You're not going out and you know, going to the park and playing. You're worried about this thing and so on. When the world pauses, it's the people that hit play that get to that next level. So let's, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Let's start uh, macro, macroeconomics. You know, we have a huge challenge right now in the world. We have all countries around the world in these recessions. We have global supplies chain, supply chains that are completely disrupted. And those, that's a big deal. Global supply chains drive the economy. It's the conveyor belt of, of goods that is the conveyor belt of money. And so when I think about what happened in, say, at the end of World War II, it might be a good, good example here, um, we had global supply chains interrupted. 
out of World War II, we got a couple superpowers come out of World War II. We got the US and China come out of World War II. Every, why is that? I don't know if people look at why that is. The reason that is, is because everything else was fucking obliterated. Every factory, every church, every house was bombed and destroyed. And so China and the US were the first to come back to market and they became global superpowers at those times because they could produce, they could meet the world's new demand. All their factories were intact. Even uh, USSR Russia was, was all obliterated. They were a big part of the war from the Northern Front. I don't wanna get into history too much, but history speaks volumes to the economics here. Um, so the US and China were first back to market. They turned into these superpowers. So I look at, okay, what's happening now um, and who's going to be first back to market? Kind of give me an idea of what economies are going to start churning first. And then I relate this back to where I live in Canada and help me decide where to invest. So who's coming back first? Well, China's coming back first. China got hit first and they are reopening when the rest of the world is still closed and trying to figure out how to reopen. So China's demand is back up, almost back up to normal. The factories are open. And now we're just looking at, they're, looking, they're just waiting for supply. They're just waiting for people to buy stuff. And since people can buy stuff online, it's not gonna be long before that supply opens up again. So China's gonna be one of the first back to market. Uh, I think Canada is gonna be one of the first back to market as well. I think, I don't know what's happening in the US. We don't know. They've got some political turmoil. They've got some, they've got like the opposite of global supply chain going on with their policy in terms of being very protectionism. I don't want to share the masks. I don't want to share this. I don't want to share knowledge. Uh, that is the opposite of, of growth for a human being and for a country. So they kind of got, the, I, don't, I don't really have a prediction on the US, but I have a prediction on Canada. I think Canada is going to come out on top here. I think it's going to come out as one of the first people back to market in any significant level. And I think it's going to turn, it's going to solidify Canada as a G20 nation and bring us into one of the superpowers. Um, you know, we're already a superpower socially, I would think we really take care of our people, but I think it's going to take, bring us into an economic superpower. Uh, our only Achilles heel is oil. With uh, the world turmoil of oil, we have, um, uh, uh, our exports, our exports on oil are completely going to kill our GDP. So we have areas like Alberta, it's going to take a while to stabilize in Alberta because it's going to take a while to stabilize world oil supplies. Um, not saying anyone from Alberta should worry, but you just want to know that it's going to take a little bit longer to stabilize and you want to plan for that. Alberta is already a volatile market um, because of the commodity based economy. And so it's just going to stay a little more volatile for a little bit longer. Than I, will say, like I will say that Alberta is working really hard to diversify their economy. Uh, Kenny, who's at the helm now, and in, in his pre predecessor, I'm not going to talk too much. I don't want to talk about politics, but other than the, the blip in Alberta's political history uh, when the NDP was voted, and I, this is no comment to the NDP, but in a commodity-based economy, you cannot have a green tainted leadership. Like it just can't happen. It, it just starts breaking things unless you want to get out of that business, which clearly Canada and Alberta does not that was a mistake that kind of started a world of instability. She inherited problems too, but Alberta in my heart, because Alberta is near and dear to me, that's where I immigrated to when I came to Canada. I lived there for five years and I follow it very closely. I think in the next 10 years, Alberta is going to be unrecognizable. I think they're, they're putting up their defenses. They're bringing in tech. They're paying for people to come to Alberta to diversify their economy and make them leaders in health. University of Alberta Health is one of the leaders leading the coronavirus research right now. Saskatoon, the same thing. Saskatchewan is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they're diversifying to get out of this, this trap where the, the world loses commodities one day and their lights turn off. You can't have that, man. Not in a global country. Not in a country. And, get, and Michael was saying G20. And will we be a super? We are a superpower. We're in the G7. We're in the G8. We're in the G7. And the G20, like we make the, the top. Like the world comes to us for permission on many things. You think they're going to be on right? Uh, on, 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 uh, you are not going to be able to recognize them like we can't recognize you right now a little bit or what? <laughs> Leave me alone, Jess. Leave me alone, Jess. <laughs> this is going on all brunch, buddy, with you. Michael, continue. <laughs> I, I agree, though. You know what? And that, that's kind of where I'm going with this, this context is I think Al Alberta is poised to be one of Canada's superpowers economically because they have to they have to they have no choice everyone's going to move out if they don't 
Right. They're going to, they have to, and they're smart enough to do that these days. We, you know, the, all the government, uh, gov- governments are. So I wouldn't be surprised if Alberta rivaled Ontario in terms of economic superpower and diversification. And um, so I think that's a really important point because out of the ashes, the greatest cathedral is always built, right? Things aren't beautiful unless they're really shitty first. So I think Alberta is poised to be an amazing superpower. Um, And I think uh, Southern Ontario, uh, the whole Ontario and Golden Horseshoe, all the way from Windsor to Ottawa, down to Niagara Falls and Hamilton and up to Barrie. I feel like there's there's a cross there. And I think that is going to continue to be extremely valuable and powerful. And so when you guys are thinking about where to invest, I feel like um, places, even though the economy is going down, the markets that have heavy tech sectors, the markets that have heavy um, sectors that align with the global supply chains, that's why I started with global supply chain. Those are the markets that are going to explode in incomes, in jobs, in uh, local uh, output, gross output, and of course, in home prices, in passive appreciation, in rental, everything explodes when these local economies explode. So uh, for anyone watching, when you think about it's all doom and gloom out there, it's not all doom and gloom. There's areas that are just killing it right now that are going to thrive. Um, and that will change, you know, uh, a year it changes all the time. So I don't want to give you guys areas. I don't have any areas, but I have the concept right. of there's certain areas that will do extremely well right now in the short term, like I'm thinking even uh, Waterloo, which isn't far from my place, the Kitchener Waterloo uh, tech sector, like they're, they're hiring like crazy over there. They're working. Anyone who works near a zoom office, right? Um, (laughs) Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to belabor it too much, but the point is that what's going on out there isn't a total collapse of the world. It is a reshuffling of money, a reshuffling of wealth. Wealth is moving and you have to, your job as a business owner is to figure out how you get in the way of that movement. That's what you've got to figure out because it's moving. It's happening. Millionaires are being made right now. I I love the way you put things, my man. I just love it. Uh, I I want people to start uh, putting questions in the Q and a section. We have Michael. Um, I'm keeping him a little bit longer. I don't want him to go because I want to make sure we get to everybody's questions. I see that they're starting to come in into the Q and a section. Michael, can you talk about like what Keyspire is up to right now? You guys obviously do a lot, a lot of things digitally, but the company um, obviously does a lot of things from a live event perspective, which you're not able to really do right now. Mm-hmm. We're not sure when that's going to open up um, and, and like fully to to the capabilities that you know you guys have thousands of people come to your events at every single uh, event. So, what, what is Keyspire up to right now? Yeah, great question. And uh, Keyspire is is a business no like no different than your real estate businesses and and we've got challenges because we do a lot of live events massive challenge for my business for this company how do we stay in business how do we continue to get our message out to continue to service and get customers if we can't do live events so keyspire is a great example of shifting our knowledge our message in a way that people can consume it keyspire 2 years from now 3 years from now keyspire will be 5 to 10 times stronger better at uh, everything that we do because of this coronavirus pandemic. I promise. I don't doubt that for us. Because it forces your hand. It yeah. forces you to adapt and pivot. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We are, I mean, we are going to be, if this never happened, we would be doing well. But because this happened, we are, our business is going to absolutely explode in the amount of people we can help in our message in the way that we can create and deliver content like we're doing right now. Now that I, even the fact that I don't have to drive to the office, I can sit home and think about shit like this and, <laughs> and do the research and make the connections so that I can, I can help people more, right? So there's so many layers. So what we're doing at Keyspire is we are delivering our education online. I guess that's no surprise. Everyone's doing things online, but we're putting together these online classes and courses that people can take. And we have one coming up on June 12th, 13th. I'd love to tell everybody about because I do. Think, I think how does one get involved? This is a no brainer. So, so helpful. We, we, our trainer goes over all these principles, the four ways to win the three investing streams. As you can see, I sit at home and I dream up these different tools and frameworks. <laughs> and then my team puts in all of the tactical stuff you need to execute because I'm the framework strategy guy. And they're the tacticians that get in the exact who to call, what to do next. And that's what they're going to teach at this master class. It's June 12th and 13th. Yeah, Tyler threw in the, uh, the website there, keyspiremasterclass.com. 
It's $297. It's as, as low as we could make it and still, you know, provide the quality we need to. We've managed to get it down so low because we are digit- doing it online. So people is are going to get monthly. Is it at monthly 297? No, it's or just once? once. Just one time, 297. Come in, learn, explode your knowledge and get prepared to get in front of that wealth. And that's, that's how I designed it to say, how do I get people prepared to be in front of this wealth? And so it's My two goal. full days. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, no, no, explain it, please. Explain it. Yeah, I just want to talk, just give out the details. Uh, you can go to the Keyspire Masterclass. And yeah, Nicole, I see a lot of people here that, are, that have already joined. Uh, you know, we launched it last Thursday and we have hundreds, I think we have over 450 attendees right now because wow. we've, we've had to add a second date. We closed the first date. We sold out in like yeah, yeah. 77 minutes. And so we had to add a second date. Not date. surprising. Yeah. And we, 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 um, at this point, we have no plans on adding a third or a fourth. So if somebody wants to join, now is the time. We're going to get feedback and we're going to um, uh, maybe add one or maybe not. Steven's coming. Excellent. They get the two half days trainer with our team. Scott and I have both have a brand new training that we're going to be doing. So Scott's going to join on Friday. I'm going to join on Saturday. Uh, everyone who joins in the next couple of days gets a couple of bonuses. They get the 20 hours of coffee with Michael. I've sat down with over 20 experts, including you guys. And so they get all of that for free. They get my course, the Property Profits Blueprint for free. They get a one-on-one strategy session with our team on the phone. So just uh, delivering, we're trying to deliver massive value for everybody. And this so is my, qu- my, my question to that is, uh, I, I get this is a really comprehensive training. Are people going to have the ability, like when, I, I know your membership, the greatest value clearly is the education and the network, but are they going to be able to continue on with other courses? Are you like lining up kind of like a Keyspire University, like a master class where they can obviously purchase more, but like take their education to new heights after the. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our model is we're, we're here to help. And I learned years ago that if I give somebody some education and just leave them hanging, then people are pissed at me. They're not, they're not just like, Oh, that was kind of neat. There's like 50% of the people are upset. It's like, what do I do next? How can I work with you personally? How can I work with someone on your team? So we have all kinds of options available from uh, if you like this course, and want to take another course to if you want to work with someone one-on-one and uh, uh, all of that is available now before, during, or after the masterclass. But this masterclass is kind of, I guess the way you put it, it's kind of like a nice um, gateway to learn about Keyspire as well and see if this is something that being connected with our network is something that would help you and, and, you know, do more for you. So our team is equipped to answer all those questions absolutely online or, or, you know, over the phone with the masterclass. And, and just, I just want you to go back over it. It's June 12th and 13th, both days for the 297. Yeah. It's a Friday from noon to four, to four Eastern time. So we can, we have people from BC all the way to Halifax and all in the U S. So, um, Noon to four with a four to five Q and A period. So an hour of questions so that all everyone's questions are all answered. Um, and then we have Saturday from noon to four as well. And then the Q and A is four to five. So uh, we've tried to make it efficient too, because I don't want yeah. to ask everyone to sit there for three full days. Um, like we do our three day workshops. We can't have you sit there for three full days from home. Um, so we're trying to uh, jam pack everything we can into these two half days. Guys, 297, think about what you spend for $300, 297, and you're, you are going to get, I just know the value that both yourself and, yeah. uh, uh, and Scott and the rest of the team bring. This will be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to you if you apply the knowledge. What, you know, a lot of people say knowledge is power. I think we all know here, us three know, that only the use of knowledge is power. And so you have the opportunity to, to invest into yourself. I think real estate's the best investment, but there is one other investment that I believe that's better, and that's investing in yourself. Yeah. And if you can invest in yourself for 297, it truly, truly is a joke, in my opinion. There's not, that's nothing um, to get two full pack days. Uh, yeah. that, that's awesome. And thank you for bringing that to our community. Michael, yeah, we really you appreciate it. that. You got it. I think your community is the, your, not, I think I know your community is the only other community that's heard about this because we don't have room for everybody. And the last thing I'll say about it is it, it is closing Monday. Uh, I just finished okay. up the, the uh, entire campaign yesterday. So we are closing this off from Monday at midnight. So if anyone's interested in getting involved, Keyspire cool. Masterclass, it'll be up there for another couple of days. And then the offer the, what's will the close. website again? I know we put it in the, in the chat, but just what's the website? Key, yeah. Keyspire Masterclass dot com perfect yeah. value added to have we got something from nicole here value added yeah. and, and, and i think pricing. jazzy yeah. jazzy I, I think what we, we should have a conversation because it's online it's different when you guys are 
our physical lives. And I mean, I was just in v Vancouver. Jazz was in, in Ottawa. We're in Montreal for all the meetups and, and things like that. It's different. Now that everything's online, I really think uh, we can kind of, and, and we'll talk about this obviously off air, but we can do some kind of a constant posting of, of, of educational opportunities, even to our REC insiders. For so sure. this isn't somebody who's from outside of our organization. Like we've been directly together for now going on years. I think like in, in obviously we don't expect Michael to, to supply us with his entire business for free, but we can have a section kind of where it outlines the intro 100%. And, and maybe some, some good beginners information. And then all our guys who are transacting and need that network and everything else can boom link straight in and yeah. go maybe to the savvy or more advanced courses. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Look, something I, I, cool. I, we'll talk about yeah. it. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely get there. I think for now, you got everyone watching Insta Live, YouTube Live, here on the webinar. Um, get to get to the domain name, Tyler. Put it back in there again, and just so everyone knows, um, REC. Like, I'm not paid to say this, guys. No, I no. truly, <laughs> it's the truth. By law, I need to tell you if I'm getting paid for something like We're this. Not I'm, not paid getting, that. I'm not getting paid anything to say this. Um, I truly, truly believe in in Michael in Keyspire, the education. Yes, we've been in the community for six years. Um, we know what what what. What, you're, what kind of value you're gonna get out of this. I actually thought it was 297 a month for a second. And so that's why I wanted you to confirm that because if it's a one-time 297, it's a no-brainer. Um, mm -hmm. Don't even think about it. I know you guys spend more on coffees in two months uh, 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 at Starbucks that, that, than getting the opportunity to educate yourself. No, we no. have tons, tons of questions. Michael, can we questions. get you for another 10, 15 minutes, my man, just to go through some of the Q&A, brother? Yeah, absolutely. I just have one more example yeah. I wanted to, just wanted to get to on the macro view. Please. I want to give, give people another example so you can kind of see the opportunity happening right now. And I'm going to pull it back to any business. And so um, I think right now is the best time to start any business or grow any business. And I think real estate is the best business, so I think that's the best to grow. But anyone else that's in other businesses as well, think about starting or growing a business right now. What is a business? A business, all it is, is providing a solution for a problem people have. And when we're in a time, an economic time or a world crisis, it is the time where the people have the most amount of problems in history is during these times. So if you can come up with a solution, you've just started a business. If you can have a solution for people's problems, you've started a business. And so think about all the problems people are having, think about the solutions. And then the third component is how you're gonna deliver your solution. And I'm thinking about the most valuable resource in a business other than knowledge, because I believe knowledge is the most valuable resource. It's not money, it's people. It's human resources. It's getting the right people that are aligned with your vision, aligned with your message, that want to be along this journey, and that are good at what they do. And um, couple that with the fear everybody has of this massive unemployment rate, 2 million people in Canada on unemployment, the most ever since recorded history, another 800,000 on the subsidy. Some people see that as a massive problem. Well, it is a massive problem. Business owners see this as a massive opportunity to help people and to explode their business because never before has this resource been so available. I don't know about you guys, but if I tried to hire somebody six or eight months ago, there is nobody out there to hire. You can't hire. There's this resource like gold is limited. This just resources, guys, time, money, humans, uh, skill sets are all just resources. And when the world shows you a resource and there's so much of it, and, and, and people don't recognize, this is to be like if the gold just appeared, rained from the sky, and people didn't realize that gold rained from the sky and you could just have all this resource, right? So we have all this resource, these people that want to work and these problems that people have and the solutions that people have, your job as a business owner is just to connect all the dots. And like, I got 10 businesses I want to start, Jazz. I just don't have enough time. Like there's so <laughs> many opportunities out there. And I just wanted to make this point. It's because the resource of human beings is so available. And I don't say that in an insensitive way. I say that in a solutions oriented way. Yeah. Imagine you could start five businesses that employed 10, biz 10 people each, and you could employ 50 people just because you're willing to do something about it and recognize the opportunity. I, I love that point. A couple of days ago, I put up a posting for, um, what's the website? Indeed, indeed.ca. Uh, and uh, I put up a posting for an editor um, just like a part-time editor. I think I got like 67 
resumes and app like uh, uh, videos back yeah. telling me what kind of work like within a two day period yeah, where if I did ago. this months yeah. ago I might have got six or seven yeah. I got 67 so to your point I mean we had, we had a very tough time finding the right people and now and now people are at home they're they're, they're readjusting so that's a fantastic point it's the oh, it's so important it's it's so and then so a real estate investor there are people out there that are willing to find properties for you so you don't yes. have to go find properties there's people out there that are willing to do work that you don't want to do or you don't have the skills to do you're helping them you're employing them you're feeding their families and you're providing a solution for your customer you're just the I connector as a business owner and you could do that all day long right now in real estate um and it's just such a massive opportunity today yes. uh, to, to make i this love work. it i love it i always like to say that the, the the most value that comes out of these webinars um, is the Q and a because now they get you and they're going to ask you direct questions. So I want to make sure we bring value yes, to everybody who's watching Simos, Uh, if you don't mind my man, you, 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 you got the controls. Let's, uh, Let's rapid it. fire some questions at Michael, since we still got him, um, throw some questions at him. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to like legit Michael, what we do is let's do rapid fire. Nice, clean, short answer so we can get through them. We've never been able to get through them. Let's we can never get through right all now. the questions. <laughs> okay, we'll do our best. Yeah, okay, we'll do our best. Uh, K. Terry, K. Terry Brown. Good morning, Michael. I'm, I'm examining properties. How big a cash flow do you look for as a percentage of GOI, gross operating income? Okay. How big a cash flow do you typically look for as a percentage of gross operating income? So it, it depends on the situation and your um, your goals. So I have... When I first bought properties, my first couple, I wanted the most cash flow possible because I wanted to, uh, it gave me security in month to month and allowed me to buy more properties. Today, I buy properties with zero cash flow because I'm the upside. It's more speculative, but the upside is huge. I buy tracts of land that are, are in the path of wealth. And so it, it all depends on the person. But, um, and I don't have a rule of thumb. I don't have an easy answer or rule of thumb. It all depends on your financial profile and it depends on what you want to get out of this business. Some people have, you earn a lot of, you earn a ton of income in your jobs. You don't need a lot of cash flow. So get into something that's a little less cash flow and a little more passive. And that way uh, you're going to explode your portfolio a little bit more. You go after the equity position. Yeah. So, so, so again, I think a lot of these questions are going to have a big personal uh, dependency, like subjective to each person's situation. Uh, so I think if anybody has a real conflict with that they're judging right now, reach out to us and we can get you to, we can get on a call or a Zoom call, whether it's with Michael or with us, uh, and really answer your specific situation. So we'll try to talk a little generally here. Yeah, uh, and I'll try to be specific, yeah, whenever I can. Yeah, our good friend Frank Sellen, I have an opportunity for a large student rental building. The numbers look good, but I'm concerned about universities not starting back up in September and my rentals being vacant. What are your feelings about September 2020 universities actually opening up? Yeah, it's a great, that is a great question. Never before in history have I been a little shaken about student rentals because they have always been the most solid core that I've loved. Um, and this is just a blip on the map. So I think student rentals now is the massive opportunity because people are uh, freaking out. And it's probably going to be maybe a few weeks from now or a month from now or happening now. It depends on each, each city. But think about what's happening. Landlords are shitting their pants and they're like, I'm unloading my student rentals. I know one guy that's selling six student rentals because of the uncertainty. Uncertainty creates profits, uh, creates wealth. And so if you're willing to take on a little bit of that uncertainty, um, then you, are, you, can get, you can get properties for uh, 80, 70, 80 cents on the dollar student rentals. And then when the universities let students in again, your property then skyrockets. So the only thing, here's the only real risk, Frank, is, and I'm sinking here for some reason. The only yeah. real risk is um, the universities close down forever. So is that going to happen? Even if they go virtual, do you think the campuses will close forever? I know I'm by University of Guelph, 250 acres, labs, um, Ontario Agricultural College, like stuff that you need to be in person for thing's not going to close down. Maybe they won't let students in for a few months or maybe, uh, you know, for one year, I'll have to rent it to a family for 2000 versus students for 2,800. I'm still going to get my rent, but when the students come back in and I've just bought all those properties for 70 cents on the dollar, my wealth just explodes from there. So you got to be prepared to take on a little bit of that exposure. And if you were prepared to take on that exposure, lower cash flow or no cash flow for a little bit, 
and you believe the universities aren't closing down, then I think it's a, it's a fantastic move to look at. Perfect. So, so we're talking about having a little bit of resilience and a little bit of patience, both words that really define investors and business owners, patience and resilience. Um, if, you, if, you, if you let six weeks rattle you that hard that you're going to make decisions on your portfolio, you are definitely making a rash decision. And I'm standing by that. And, and Michael, you're, what, did you say about the goal, what did you say about the goalie in hockey? I loved it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> when the market goes, when you're a little scared and fearful, Michael's, Michael's thought process yeah. around this is the, I, I've never heard it as good. I want to hear it again. Yeah, yeah. And this, I think, was just business, business advice. I translated all my real estate advice is really just business advice because it applies to all businesses. But um, you got to be afraid to take the hits. You got to be, you got to be not afraid to take the hits, take, take, the, take the shots, right? And they're going to come at you in business and in life and in real estate. So just be prepared for the shot. Wear the padding. Be the goalie that's prepared to get in front of those shots to, to, to kick ass and just have the right padding on. Don't, uh, don't run from the puck or in soccer, run from the ball because you're not going to be a very good goalie at that point. If you're, <laughs> exactly. I, love it. I, I think love what it. I said was if you're going to be, yeah, if you're going to get in that position, <laughs> you've got to be prepared to take the, take the shots for yeah, that. Yeah. So, Otherwise, don't be a goalie. <laughs> don't do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to go off to Dave Campanella. I mean, again, these are all people that uh, we know very, very well. Uh, welcome, Dave. In the current uh, environment, we have been repositioning our portfolio towards a targeted 50% LTV. Good for you. A good old conservative, Dave Campanella, to help us manage future risk to either rental revenue or financing costs. Note, our properties are in the GTA. That's targeting a 50% LTV in the GTA. You're a champion. You're sitting on hundreds. Good for you. Uh, we know this means accepting our reduced ROI against invested capital. What is your perspective on risk and how are you managing it? So the question here is he's gearing his LTV down to 50 cents on the dollar, which is gonna drive his returns down and he knows it, but this is making him sleep at night because yeah. if values do get the volatility, which they haven't yet, but if they do, he doesn't have to worry about nothing. So the question to Michael is, Michael, what do you think of what he's doing and of course, what is your perspective on managing risk in a turbulent time? Yeah, there's, there's, so there's two ways to look at this. And it's, it's, um, it could be the best way to do it or it could be the worst way to do it depending on what you want to do. It sounds like it's the best for you. It's perfect because it aligns with your goals. And so we talked about this, guys, about uh, defensive and offensive strategies in a time of crisis. Some people take a defensive position and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to organize things. I'm okay to wait it out. Dave, right? It was, it was Dave. Yep. Dave, 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 yeah. David, Dave, you're, you're, if you're okay to wait it out and that makes you feel comfortable, take a defensive stance, build the wall, like shore up the walls, the defenses, go 50% loan to value. Your ROI is going to go down. You're not going to get your leverage multiplier all the way up, but you still have a two times leverage multiplier because you're putting in half. You get a two times leverage multiplier. So you're still making more money than you would other places. Uh, but if, if that's where you are in your investing, and you don't need to explode your business right now. It's, it makes you sleep better at night to be on defense. Then go on defense. Play the defensive game until you feel like playing the offensive game. The other option, if, you, if those of you that want to or have to play the offensive game, you see that this situation, there's a ton of equity to buy all those properties that we just talked about. To buy all the properties from the motivated sellers and people that are panicking right now because people are, are panicking. And so you can free up cash in order to buy other properties, you take on a little bit of exposure because you're buying properties in times of uncertainty. But if you believe that uh, that market or the economy or those areas will not erase from the map and they will continue to rise up in value as the market goes up and down all the way up, then you might be comfortable with that exposure. So that's the idea of you hit, are you going to hit pause or are you going to hit play? And so I don't think it's a bad idea. I think shoring up your defenses, if, that what, if that's what helps you sleep at night, is great. I don't want I should say is I don't want anyone on here to go out and be like, I'm going to buy real estate because Michael told me. No, don't. It's got to be right for you. It's, you got to get educated. Like you, you come to, those of you coming to the master class, at least you're going to get the perspective of, is it the right time for me? Because you might go to the master class and say, you know what? I've learned a lot. I like it. I, I see, I believe in it, but I, now I know that it's time for me to pause and play defense. And so I think it's a great strategy. It's a defensive strategy. And if it's right for you, it is the absolute right thing to do. And I will also mention the thing about defense. 
Uh, yes, you're not going to expand during a time, but you're also not going to get hurt during a time. So defense, uh, it, it, is a, it is a survival mode tactic. Yeah, uh, as long, and my advice to Dave would be, shore up, do your defense, but be ready to strike. At the same it. time you're doing this, speak to your financiers and make sure that if you see something, bang. And some, just sometimes, take it the down best off, some, sometimes the best offense is a good defense, right? Like sure. I yeah. see it in sports teams all the time. And so there's nothing wrong with playing defense because then you can counter strike really quickly. Yeah. So yeah, let's use that let's use that analogy. I love it because so say you're doing a hockey game and yeah. uh, and you're up five to two. Your your score is five and their score is two. And, you know, you, you, why, why pull the goalie? Go yeah, on defense. Exactly. Put, exactly. put friggin' five defensive guys and stand yeah, yeah. up from that. Yeah. And just the rest, think, play up exactly. the clock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, yeah, and sure. then have your offensive team resting on the bench, just waiting. Have your financing set up. Have your realtor set up. Have your everything, your contractors, everything set up, ready to go. Yeah. While all your defensive, you're just on defense. You don't need to score. So that's where I was yeah. going. Like, if you're at a part in your um, – investing career where you don't need to score anymore you've got the money you're comfortable you're okay go on defense and just 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 chill just Love chill it. um because if you go on offense there's always the risk that they're going to score another goal or two and you yeah, can lose the game yeah. now if you are down by six right if you're out there and you're down by six and you have to make a move that's pull the goalie right now you're down yeah. by six right they've got five they've got five points and you got two points we'll say you're down yeah. by three and there's two minutes left in the game you're not going to put all your defensive guys in front of the net because sure it's a safe bet but you're going to lose the game so that's where pull your goalie take out the equity learn how to invest and go on the offense and do your best to get to win the game do your Love best it. to win the game you're only gonna do that with five offensive players all right, right boys I, I got one for uh for for jazz tackar Jazz, are you ready for a question? Oh, yes. I'm going to put you in the spot right now. Uh, okay, I love it. For, for, for newcomers, yep. nobody has ever seen us before. It's their first yep. time here. Yeah. What does the REC do different? What do you bring to the table that is different from any other realtor, from any other consulting service, I, from any other builder, from any other? I, I, I love the question. Um, first and foremost, we lead with education. I would, I would strongly recommend that you go and uh, uh, start maybe at our YouTube page, which is youtube.com forward slash REC experience. Start fishing around there. There's a little over 250 uh, videos there. You'll see myself and Simos be sitting down with guys and gals that just started in investing in real estate, right up to someone like Michael, Scott, um, uh, Alfonso, who have hundreds and hundreds of doors. And we really are leading with education. The next step from there would be to sit down with myself or Simeon. And we're going to start with, um, like in the, in, in the financial markets, they call it a, a KYC, know your client. We're going to sit down with you and, and, and really start out a real estate action plan. What's your goals? Find out what your goals are and then put you in, put you in con uh, and connect you with the right people. Sometimes that's someone from our team and you might look and say, okay, you know what? I would really like to invest in Vancouver. Great. We have investor savvy realtors lined up in the Vancouver area right across the country. If you wanted to start with, you already have a property that you're looking at Saskatchewan in Saskatchewan and you just need another set of eyes, send it to us. We'll, we'll actually be a second set of eyes for you. We really truly are here to just kind of lead with education, bring as much value as we pro uh, possibly can, give you all the information, and then you decide if we're the right people to work with. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jez. I think that really uh, represents uh, fully my opinion as well. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that we're partners. <laughs> so lead with education, take it <laughs> slow, uh, and, uh, and build your team, guys. Uh, that's yeah, what we do different. I, I don't I don't know a single other company uh, that, that will hold anyone's hands the way we do. We take pride in it. We call it world-class service. And we, we legit, uh, we take you from A to Z like this. If you say, let my hand go, we'll let it go. But if you yeah. say, keep holding it, we'll keep holding it. And I, that's just the way it is. For the for the past 15 years, we, we, we've always used an analogy that you drive the car. You decide how fast you want to go, how slow you want to go. 
We're just here to make sure everything's working, the brakes, the steering, the the, the air conditioning. We're just here to kind of make sure that GPS, everything is working. Right? The, the GPS. GPS, I love it. The GPS to help you navigate through this process. Uh, I got a real estate question and then I have a 3D training question for Michael. Quick one. Solar and then, I, and then I got to hop off. It's pasta lunch day on Saturday. Got it. Got you. Go. Let's get two okay. questions in there. Two that. questions. I would like to buy more houses in Calgary because this is the city where I live. However, I'm wondering if the appreciation will be adequate in 10 years. I always check the other ways to win or satisfy. I'm just concerned about appreciation. What do you think? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, I think hint, this is... Hey, hint, hint. Re, uh, invest where the returns are... Best. Yep. Best <laughs> returns are best. For me, it comes, so I'd start with the four ways to win. It's, it's, it's just about just as much about the property it is for the market. So there's great properties in Calgary and there's shitty properties in Calgary. You got to find the right property. And then as far as the market is concerned, um, the market has that degree of uncertainty. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's going to just stay the way it is now or if it's going to explode to the next superpower of Canada and you're going to have five times your money in the next eight years. Cause that's possible as well, based on what we were talking about earlier, it is. Um, but make sure you're close to home. You're comfortable with that. And that's completely fine. We used to talk about guys at the summit that if you're going to get 22% investing across the country or 13% investing close to home, and that helps you sleep at night, then take the 13% close to home because that's what you're, you don't, you don't want to get more returns, but now you're all stressed out. So maybe you, um, by the way, 13%, I don't, don't buy a property at 13%. I don't <laughs> property, income yeah. property that low. Um, no, no. Any property that low. But um, yeah, you know, I would say make sure the pro- property is strong economics. With the market, I'm, I, it's, I'm up in the air about the market. I know it's going to come back. Like anything on the long term, I know it's going to come back. The question is, is it going to come back slowly uh, or is it going to just explode and be the next superpower of Canada once the Alberta government subsidizes all these diversification industries, which is what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Michael. Um, one last question to you, Jazz. And then there's a few people now that have asked the details of a masterclass. I want to use that. Uh, why don't we do that as closing? I yeah, just we'll have an important question for you. Has, Michael has passed the lunch. I don't want him to miss that. Um, okay, but, the, but the, the you, you can't give, you can't give the, the master class input in closing, bro. I got okay, one go. question for you. And then okay. Michael closes off with master class. And got it's a beautiful it. thing. Go. Okay, question for you, Jazz. Uh, and it's an important one. It was from that, Rick. One second, guys. Let me just find it. Where did I have it? It was regarding pre-con because we do so much of that. I want to answer it. And so many of you in this call are in that space. Uh, let me just find it. Frank Salmon. And Where guys, do you uh, see? Okay, go. Uh, sorry. Um, pre-construction market. Where do you see it over six to the next six to 12 months, Jazz? Because we've had obviously a, 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 a disruption in the supply chain, closing of construction, now slowly reopening construction. Where do you see? Is there volatility? Is there extra risk? Is there less risk? What do you see happening right now in the pre comment Well, right now, developers have uh, uh, held off on coming out with, with launches. That's going to change in the next uh, uh, 30 to 60 days. We're already in conversations with developers in the greater Toronto area, and I'm speaking specifically about the greater Toronto area, consumer confidence is coming, coming back. Uh, our, one of our websites, our national website for Rural LePage Canada, receives around four to five million uh, hits a month. And just pre uh, that's pre-COVID numbers. During COVID, uh, for the first three to four weeks, it went down 50%. Last week, the numbers are back up to four to five million. That tells us that the consumer confidence is is getting very strong. In terms of pre-construction, we like to look at real estate five to 10 years out. This is, we know that like Michael mentioned earlier, values go up and down. It's very strong. The fundamentals here in greater Toronto area are very, very strong. There is still a very strong uh, uh, demand and we don't have enough supply. Immigration for the greater Toronto area is slated to be 2 million in the next 10 years. That was, that was just pre-COVID numbers. Originally, people were like, ah, okay, because the borders are closed. We're going to probably be hitting those numbers in, in 11 to 12 years. I personally, and this is being recorded, I think we're going to hit the 2 million in eight and a half, nine years because the rest of the world is looking at Canada and saying, 
wow, did you guys, you guys are figuring this out once again, because mm-hmm. we take care of our people so well. We've, the government acted very, very quickly in terms of getting money into people's hands. And so I think the immigration is going to be, uh, uh, that, hit that number of 2 million, eight and a half to 10 years for, for sure. And, and, and then we just don't have enough supply. So pre-construction market is very Thank strong. you. Thank you, my beautiful boy. I, but right I now, to... just don't invest. Like I would say, hold off for another you know, couple of weeks. Let's see if we get some rental guarantees coming down the pipeline as well. Great point because we need to shelter ourselves and mitigate all risk if possible. So that's a yes. huge point. Yes. I do. I want to respect our beautiful guest. Uh, you're a great human being, Michael. Thank you for sharing all the knowledge today. Six, seven different people in the last two minutes asked. Give us an overview again. Where do people find the details of Masterclass? What are their next steps? Um, and and uh, we take it from there. Okay, great. Uh, the link is right there in the description. The details are it's June 12th, 13th. It's two half days, all online and all live. So it's not a recorded, just an online course. It is live and interactive with one of our top trainers, Paul, uh, Paul Hecht. And uh, it's uh, noon to four o'clock Eastern time with a four to five Q&A session. Some of the things Paul is going to go over, uh, you know, including the four ways to win, how to plan your lifestyle freedom day, the three myths of real estate, how to avoid them. If you guys just avoid these three myths, you've paid your it's paid your $300 fee 10 times over. Uh, investors and speculators, uh, what pe- the mistakes people make when they calculate cash flow. Yeah, I don't want you to miss these, these things. How to tell if a property cash flow is in 10 seconds or less. How to know where the next hot neighborhood will be. So some of these questions about, you know, the questions about Calgary and different places across the country. Uh, these are the, the methodologies we're going to go through. Uh, having access to capital, JV money, how to start finding access to capital, full analysis, four ways to win of a property and examples of how people are having success today. Cause it's one thing to give you a formula, but it's another thing to be able to show you how people are killing it every single day. And so that you can model what they're doing. And so keyspiremasterclass.com, it closes Monday at midnight. This offer closes. These bonuses will be gone. We'll never offer these bonuses again. We're just doing it as a a COVID special during this pandemic to get people educated. So massive bonuses over 20 hours of value and uh, closes on Monday. And I think it's going to be the best uh, real estate experience for a two day class that people are going to have their all year or their entire life. So Uh, don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake that we've seen other people make waiting. Um, Okay, honey, we'll do this when we get back um, or we'll go out, like literally leave us now. Like, yeah. Simos and I are going to close off, but we, you, you don't need to see us. There's nothing, we're not going to bring any more value than I believe that the, that the course is going to bring. Leave now, go to that domain name, get this 297. Like, thank you, Michael. Get her done. Thank you, Keyspire, mm-hmm. for making uh, it so affordable. Thank you. Yeah. So, so I, I do want to take a moment and, uh, and I want to speak for all three of us. There is an outpour. There's probably 50, 60 comments of people saying, thank you for bringing this value today. Thank you for bringing Michael on board. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Great job, gentlemen. Um, I want to thank you. Uh, so, so Michael, Jazz, the, like we're, we, we, we work, we love this. We do this because we have a passion for it. But every single person, four or 500 people who logged on on a Saturday morning to spend a couple hours with us, we thank you. Because this is why we do it and we appreciate it. and We appreciate your time and you could have been anywhere. So from the bottom of my heart, and I know I can speak for Michael, I know I can speak from Jazz. Thank you. Uh, Jazz, if you want to close us off, buddy. Uh, no, I, I, look, I, you, you said it best. Michael, I know you got to run. Just thank you. To, thank you for everything that you do for the community, all the value that you bring, um, and know that you're helping a lot of people. And just so thank you so much, Michael. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. And thanks for having me. I mean, this is great. This is great. Thanks, guys. Take care, okay. buddy. Talk Everybody. Soon. Have a good one. Jazz, you got anything else, pal? Uh, no, look, I just want to leave it with everyone to say, um, obviously, get to that link. It's a no-brainer. It's, it's, it re- truly, truly is a no-brainer. Just get that done. I can't say uh, any more than that. Um, other than that, for our, our brunch with RECs moving forward, please shoot us an email. Let us know what topics you want us to cover. Can't, can't always promise we can bring people on like Michael Saracini, um, uh, uh, but we are always going to try. Um, but just get, shoot us an email, uh, info at recanada.com. That would be the easiest place. Um, if you're on YouTube, please uh, uh, send us an email at info at recanada.com. Tell us the topics, what I think Simos and I are really, really good in. 
and, and more than Sino Sanai, the REC team um, that is fantastic at is reverse engineering what you're looking for. These brunches started um, kind of just for a reason, Simo, for Simos and I to see each other. <laughs> and then we were like, well, why don't we invite um, some of our insiders? And, and now it's taken on a life of its own. I think we had close to uh, 500 people log on, Simos mentioned. So, I mean, we never really thought that it was going to get to that. But like anything else in our life, momentum starts to take over. But now we want to make sure we're bringing valuable information based on what you're looking for. Send us an email, info at recanada.com. Let us know some topics and then we'll reverse engineer it with guests. Okay, my man. I want to go. I have some uh, beautiful spinach pie waiting for me. Uh, I don't I'm know starving. what I have, but I'm hoping it's Indian food for me. I'm in the mood for well, some Indian food. Uh, right I now. didn't have enough time to prepare much. I typically actually have some food. I have a pastry or something. I know. I, know. I, I didn't have time today. Uh, it was I a know. rough morning. But yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to everybody. Uh, Take care. Next you, Saturday, you, we'll you. see you guys. Next Saturday, 10.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Take care.